I'm super happy that you guys followed me all through this epic three day 10 item survival challenge. We're gonna jump into the final episode. But first I wanna thank my sponsor, DraftKings. It's the leader in daily fantasy sports, putting you in the center of the action with millions of dollars of weekly prizes. To play the game is super simple. You're gonna pick a quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, and one defense. Each player is assigned a specific salary and your salary, your total team salary should not exceed $50,000. After that, it's simple. Simply collect points for touchdowns, field goals, and yards, and so much more. For full rules and scoring, go to DraftKings.com slash fantasy dash football. New users use my code WOODEDBEARDSMAN in the link down below and that'll get you started and eligible for millions of dollars in weekly prizes. Do I look like a sack of turd? Because <laughs> that's what I feel like. Oh, my face is swollen. Uh, it was, uh, that night was worse. I'm in my, uh, it's a rival shelter. <laughs> I'm never doing this again. Like this, until fall has settled in and all the biters are done. Because that was not good. It was hotter last night than the night before, so it took a lot longer to cool down. So I couldn't take the uh, bug net off my face. Well, I did, and then I just poked my face out a little bit, and I put a little bit of bug spray just kind of here so that I couldn't get bit. But for some reason, I just couldn't get as comfortable. Uh, it's the settle-in night, so I didn't sleep all that good. But we're through that. We're on day three of our three-day 10-item survival challenge. And we're going to pack all the this out. We're done with this location. We're going to try another location to try to do something a little bit more special for our last day here. And we already have breakfast from yesterday, if you're following along on the series. So we're going to fire that up. Looks like Jira's up and at him already. He's got fire going. So I don't have to do that. And uh, we'll cook up breakfast and we'll paddle out. Um, and then we've got to skip over a bit of a hike in to another place where hopefully we'll get, continue the success. It's been a good trip so far. I think we've exceeded both of our expectations as far as what we've been able to do with just 10 items each. So we'll see if our luck continues or if we just end up with a nice, beautiful hike in the woods and uh, experience the full experience of Northern Ontario. Come check on our food stash. You know, I was thinking last night, Jer, is uh, that you were kind of poo-pooing the clams and all that. <laughs> you know, like, oh, we don't need any more food and we got enough food. We don't want to babysit anything else. But look, the clams, they babysat themselves overnight. No, I was thinking, uh, <laughs> like, if you were doing this long term, you'd maybe set up a something where you could keep them. <laughs> like a rock pool or something yeah. and then it's just like well we'll just keep it full of clams and then whenever we're hungry we got some <laughs> yeah. so like this the benefit of these are i'm going to grab them because i didn't really show one off the other day but uh these are alive yeah <laughs> so they're not going to spoil no you can store them alive <laughs> yeah yeah and as they're stored alive what they're doing is they're purging, so they're opening and closing, and then washing the dirt and gross stuff that are inside that gets in your teeth that yep. it's really nasty. Yep. But we have breakfast ready made. Have you had some yet, dear? Uh, I have, yeah. Yeah? Eaten. Did you get sick yet? No. Okay. Oh, well, have a bite? You'll never know if it was from that or if it was from the water <laughs> or... There's so many know. questionable things. Even the water and the life dry feel like it's not 100% on par with like 
water hygiene because it's kind of getting everywhere. And then I went snorkeling and a lot of stuff got inside my mask and I guess my body mechanics physiology or whatever you call that biophysiology mechanics it, it just runs down the back of my nose and I end up oh, yeah. drinking it grab my water bottle here and make my way over I've been uh, it's not good to well we clean the fish over there and also there's like an otter toilet like it stinks it smells bad like they're pooping all over the rocks over there so I've been kind of coming down over here on this edge I do prefer to go out in the middle to get my water it's just cleaner there's less bacteria but uh, getting the boat out and going for a paddle doesn't really tickle my fancy this morning so I just got my portable one liter and I head back to the life straw and definitely hydrate because today is going to be a super hot day Tastes like lake. Lake water tastes like lake? Yeah. Warm lake water. Rolling boil here, and we're gonna try to do something, well, fancy schmancy with the mussels. We're gonna call it gourmet mussels. We're gonna try to just put them in long enough that they open up, and then we're gonna pull them out and then fry them with butter and wadobo. We got one. Two, three, four, five, six. Three each. That one looks like a vagina. They always do. <laughs> they always do? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that guy. That looks good. So it looks like we got almost instantly one opened up. Let's see if I can fish it out. It might not. Oh, look at that. I got it right out. Nice. Look at that. It looks like a vagina, Jer. Yeah, maybe I'll take that frying pan off. It hasn't warmed up yet. If I can fish all of them out like that, that might be just a success. Some tongs would be handy. Did somebody ask for tongs? No way. Okay, well here we go. There we go, that's the meat. Oh, it's a combo. Here. Oh. <laughs> Caught the stick too. Nice. You got that guy? Oh, Still he's hanging, he's little hanging little. on. Like, like seafood quality. That guy's hanging on. Yeah. They're so mid. They're so meaty and vagina-y. Well, there we go. How does that look? I think that looks like you could serve it in a restaurant and get away with it. I don't see any grit, but we'll find out with our teeth. That's for sure. So next thing is, we'll add it to the fire and then we'll uh, throw a little bit of butter and adobo in there, and we'll dine in the beauty. Wadobo? Wadobo. Well, then for sure you can serve it in a restaurant. Oh, 100%. Yeah, you can't beat this. The view, the food, the company. Wow. Wow. Let's not go overboard on the company. Well, <laughs> it's all in the perspective, I guess. So that's a good start. That's half the thing. How things look and how they smell. It smells great. Too hot to eat? Probably. <laughs> you can try if you want, but I think you might burn your mouth. Ready to go? Oh yeah, that's good. Hmm. Got a chewy part. A watery part. <laughs> it's got every parts of it. Mm -hmm. Soft part. You might liken this to something. Oh, I've got a grit. You got it. And <laughs> water. I heard that one. Or, and butter. It's got a juicy part. It's got a tough part. It's got all kinds of textures in there. Mm -hmm. You could liken this to something. It's an aphrodisiac. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. It's chewy. Mm -hmm. it's, there's like a chewy part. It's the foot that's it's chewy, the foot. I think. Yeah. There's like, I feel like there's one section of it that you could eat, mm -hmm. and the other section of it's like, eh. You probably could figure out how to cut it out, it's mm -hmm. that piece there, right? I think it's just a foot. So, and probably a lot of people don't know that about clams, but that foot, they actually 
push it out of their shell and mm -hmm. pull their shell forward. That's how they move through the water. Like a six. Maybe it's like a six. It's a four as a food and a six as a, no, it's gotta be less than a four as a modern food. It's probably like a two or three. Yeah. Well, if you gave people this, they'd be like, all right, let's give it a shot. I'm probably not gonna do that again. Yeah. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but um, it's not that it's not that bad. It's doable. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. If you can get over the chewiness, there are uh, mm. there are six with butter. Maybe a, maybe six and a half. If you're out here and you're tired and you're eating, it, they go, it goes higher. You put up with the foot. You should but, stir that corn cake around in this butter now. You should. I bet you if you took the foot out, you could serve it to lots of different people and be like, ah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's not bad with the butter and the spices. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's a good experiment. Yep. Yeah, good job. I would eat those again. Snorkel guy. Nothing wrong with that. Oh. Yeah. Survival item number 10. The mystery. Mystery item. <laughs> Snorkel mask. Just threw the corn cake rations in there. Soak up all the rest of the butter. And part of a well-balanced meal, I guess. Oh, just cleaning up camp. We got leave no trace. Leave no garbage. Actually, Jeremy's taking a bit of garbage out that we found around camp here. And uh, leave everything as we found it, or better. So there's some things we did find, like this grate. And uh, we added a little bit more wood to the pile here. And this fire grate too. That all stays. And uh, we found somebody's tent peg. So we put it someplace where it's more visible in case somebody needs one. And uh, we also found a few other items and we left some bonus items. Jer left a uh, lighter up here and then uh, I left a lure here. <laughs> Jer's got, Jer's on the blooper reel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what happened there? Did you yeah. slip? No, I went to lean my bag the one way on the rocks and it was like way front heavy and so it tipped the other way. <laughs> Into the lake. Oh. This pack does that. It always wants to. <laughs> and then I had to step in over my boot to grab it. <laughs> Let's get in the canoe and see what else this beautiful nature will provide for us as far as sustenance. Another beauty day. No clouds. Well, a couple puffs, but uh, hardly any wind. Beauty. Well, it's a bummer we've got to unload everything, but that's where we are. Jeremy, the uh, his only trick, the only trick he knows. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, did you see that? I switched to my thumb. <laughs> Jeez, you gotta give me more warning than that. <laughs> Didn't you play on the baseball team? I did. Yeah, we beat you every time, right? Uh, probably not. For it's for reasons like that. Yeah, we were undefeated one year. Probably pitched a no hitter against you. No, I was. Uh, dude, my on base percent was 750. Uh, maybe not throw that one. Three. That one will shatter. You can catch it. Well, I can catch it, but you have to give me more <laughs> notice. I just called three. If we're playing baseball, three. that one I'm not worried about. It's the weird ones that hit in the back of the hand because we don't know you're playing baseball. We're uh, portaging. A lot of carbon in that water, carbonated. Well, it's how you have to suck. Yeah. So it makes you suck air in. Oh yeah. So a couple days ago we came back. Um, a couple days, I guess so. Day before yesterday, made the paddle back. So we're back basically uh, river length and the portage in the lake and then yesterday we went back one lake further and that was really the ticket to survival was getting past all the crowds 
hopefully this other lake produces and it makes it worthwhile for us to move. We got to do a bit of bushwhacking. This is one of Jeremy's uh, secret lakes, secret little puddles he kind of discovered a while ago. But there's no trail, so we're literally walking through the middle of the bushes to try to find a little pond where we can find some cool water. And hopefully we can round out today's ad today's adventure, the last couple of days adventure. So we just did a stash up there, left most of the gear, just got the day trip stuff, lighter tackle. I'm gonna try to find some uh, delicious trout. You know, they're my favorite kinds of things to eat. And we'll probably be able to combine it with some wild foods if we don't get lost in here. Gonna dissuade a lot of people from coming out. Where you can hear that water coming out. Uh, right in the shadow of that spruce tree over there. Yeah. That's a hot spot. And then you see that dead leaner way at the far end of the pond. Yeah. There's another spring right there. That's a hot spot. And then you see that root pile over there. That's also a hot spot. And then all along here is like nothing. Oh, I did catch a trout on this side, but and then you'll see the same thing on the other side. There's a bigger one. It looks like it looks like there's a hole in the bottom of the pond. So yeah, first impressions is it's not not much to it. No. Very shallow. There's maybe one foot or so of water. You can see right to the bottom, so I wouldn't presume there's any trout here. So we're gonna have to find little pockets. It's warming up on shore here, but it is all spring fed. So we got to go around. The water is shallow and that might work into our favor or it might mean that the fish all got picked off by birds, but we'll find out. So that's what makes a good trout water habitat. It's got springs up here on the hill and that's draining down there, feeding that puddle. This trout of all sorts love cold water. They can't tolerate the warm waters like we were back down in the lake. Keep an eye out for any trout here. See what happens. We can only try. Oh, I gotta get some water in me though first. I am so thirsty. I got uh, my life straw in here. I'm dying for a drink of water, so I gotta grab the life straw here. And I'm gonna get down there and suck it right out of the spring water. I probably could, this is the kind of water that you could actually drink right from the source and not have to worry about dying <laughs> or getting giardia because it does come from right there and it does leak into here. So this is 100% spring, but I'm gonna use a life straw just in case. The benefit, of course, is gonna get it nice, cold, quenching water. That is super refreshing water. Whew. Yeah, that's cold. Oh. Brain freeze. <laughs> cold, eh? Yeah, it gave me brain freeze. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it's like drinking an ice cream cone, eating ice cream cone in the middle of a hot day. Whew. All right, well, let's see. Let's see what the leg's gonna give us. Uh, on this whole trip, I've been using the mystery taco box. You guys use the code Beardsman, and that'll get you your first box for as little as 10 bucks. Throughout the trip, I've been using this on all pike bass, and it's performed flawlessly. I do have some pod skis uh, fire bait, and we actually have a little bit of some worms that we had left over. But uh, I mostly pack these for the other lake. And so I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna be as aggressive to use these. I'm gonna use something like a little, little spinner. They've got uh, all kinds of variety of stuff. You guys wanna get yourself a mystery pack box. Basically the shtick is you're gonna get something new every single month and it's gonna be something different. I'm trying to sort it out, but there's a little spinner. That would work perfectly, so I might try that. And uh, I've got some other ones that I opened earlier these little lures here these are perfect for smaller trout that is absolutely perfect so check out uh, mystery tackle box i'll link that down in the description below you guys can see if that's for you it's nice to build up your tackle arsenal and i went through 
on the last adventure. You should definitely watch the video before that. Um, but I went through both of those boxes till I found out what worked on the bass and it happened to be something I wasn't really expecting. And so you, you get to fool around with that and see what works. So we've got light line here, six pound test. We'll just let the line fall in the water. And if there's a fish swimming by, anywhere in that little hole there, we should see our line start moving. And that'll indicate that we got a trout pickup. And I think I'm pretty much in the center there where there might be fish. I see a nice deep pocket there. It's not super deep though, so if there's trout in here, we're either gonna find them right away or we're not. Nothing following that guy in, so we'll try try the deeper hole over here. And we are in full sun too, so that's a little bit of a challenge when it comes to trout fishing, because they like to stay down at the bottom and not chase things too much because the birds will see them. So we're gonna go try the next hole. It is sunny today and uh, if there's any trout, they're gonna wanna be kind of in the shade. I got myself in a little bit of a pickle. Oh, the bow broke and uh, <laughs> down goes the baby. Cradle and all. <sighs> well, there's some edibles there. Touch me not. There we go, we fell in the feast here. Uh, This might be all we get today. I need to touch me not flowers. All right, let's see if I can get up. I'm gonna backpack on my back. Huh. I'm gonna go for a, oh, I'm gonna fall in. I'd walk in there, but it's all like moosh. And that'll just scare all the fish away. We've been following it all the way up and uh, finally got a little bit of a riffle, some deeper water. Something's up with that. The other pond, it was, uh, maybe it was drained from the beaver. So we're gonna try here, see if we can't pull one of the hardest trout out of the water that we've worked for so far this year. There's a pool down here, so I'm gonna get my pole. Skip down there, see what we end up with. We got one. Oh, the big one should be down there. Whoa, that one moves. We have some of the rocks for keeper colors. Jeepers. Got one? Is that a trout or a chub? A little trout. Uh. I ain't putting any back though. Oh, I got a stick. Here's a trophy for today. There we go, there's a good one. Oh, come on, stay on, there we go. There we go, hey. Yeah, that's good a good one. Better. Well, for all our efforts today, we only ended up with a taste. Jeremy went up river. He may come back with a few more, hopefully. But uh, just got the fire going here. 
and uh, wait for Jeremy to come back. We did manage to find some mushrooms, so we'll uh, add that to the spoils and uh, do a little bit of a fry. A little bit of a celebratory feast here for our final of three days living off the land with only 10 survival items. It's been a long journey, but it's been pretty epic. So I'm pretty sure we got mushrooms somewhere in my bag here. I think in my bag or, or uh, Jeremy's bag. Either way, we're gonna be eating today. Whew. Much deserved. Are you proud of those? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of work. They're so little and they're so beautiful. Well, that's and, uh, four to four plus three. So yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. We got a bite. Yeah, we got the makings for the meal. We got to close out for our adventure and uh, this just takes me right back to my younger years and probably yours too, eh? Yep. Fish and Creek Specs. So it looks like in combination, I think I got three in the pot. So that's seven little guys. Yeah, we got three. I think I got the biggest one. Yeah. <laughs> you did riffle fishing, so that's why I ended up with smaller. There's, a, there's a, one nice pool there with a big piece of foam and that's where I got uh, wow. the bigger one. But Nice, well mine's already got the heads off. Well, they're already gutted, I should say. So okay. they're ready for the pot. Um, okay. Yeah, we're ready to go. Fire's ready, we're all set. Right on. Well, in our trekking and our travels, I had the mushrooms suspended on the back of this billy can, one of my 10 items, and they seem to have gone missing. So probably it uh, tipped over when I was hit something and just fell out and lost them. So they're somewhere in the woods here. So a squirrel is gonna be very happy when he finds that bag and chews through it because there's lots of edible mushrooms for him. We got some pike too. Leftover pike, we've been hauling this around. We smoked it all last night. Oh, we've been chewing on this today in between all the hustling. That's pretty good. I'm surprised it kept this long considering how hot it is out here. That has a spot. We'll back that up with some trout. Put it's going to have so much butter and wadobo yeah, on it now. That's what I'm thinking. You won't know where the trout stops <laughs> and the glove starts. It's about the same texture. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> There's nothing more tender than a little creek trout. Dude, these are leather softened gloves. Mm hmm. Yeah, high quality. Princess Auto. Mm. <clears throat> well, there we go, guys. There's our spoils for the day. I don't know if you can see them. A bunch of tiny trouts, and they're they're pretty hot, and uh, they're full of oil. You see that? There we go. Bunch of little guys. So it was a lot of effort today, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna definitely figure a better way to go about things. Doing like a tr small trout trip versus like hammering on the warm water species. Yeah. I think that's something we're gonna work on. We're gonna work on our gear. We have some ideas on some of the things we're gonna do next. Uh, maybe I'll be able to come back up and, and uh, Jeremy, we can do, do another kind of similar type of survival challenge. We've got a really good idea for that. So yep. you have to stick around. Yeah. If you guys like that video, make sure you write full stop. It helps me make more videos for you guys. And you can always welcome to share it. That helps probably more than anything at this point in time. Aside from that, click on the video, watch it all the way through. You know the good stuff. Big bucket of water in the face, that'd be such a good ending. Be refreshing anyway. Always douse your fire, says Mr. Bear. Smokey the bear. Smokey the bear.